This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to Buffalo, where the first funeral is being held today for the victims of Saturday's massacre, when an 18-year-old white supremacist opened fire in a grocery store in the heart of Buffalo's black community. The gunman shot dead 10 people, all African American. Today's funeral is for 68-year-old Hayward Patterson. He was a deacon at the Tabernacle Church of God, known for giving rides to people who needed to shop at Tops, where Saturday's attack took place. We're going back now to India Walton, longtime Buffalo community activist who ran for mayor of Buffalo last year, works for the Working Families Party and Roots Action. India, we talked to you on Monday, right after the massacre. And at the end of this week, we wanted to go back to you. It was horrifying as I laid out the names of the victims as we knew them at that point on Monday. Um, in that list was Kat Massey. And you were we're hearing that for the first time at that moment. Again, our condolences. Um, can you talk about, at this point, a week later, six days later, how the community is dealing and who the people are who have died and what you think needs to be done? Thanks, Amy. Um, the, the community has is, is come together. Um, Buffalo really is a place of resilience, of deep community of mutual aid. Uh, we've seen time and time again when tragedies happen, and even on a day-to-day, -day, we, we take care of each other. So the outpouring of support from agencies and individuals from all over other municipalities, localities, and all over the country and world has really been overwhelming. My question is, what happens when the cameras leave? How do we continue to support people who've been negatively impacted? I walked around the neighborhood yesterday and talked to folks who were just out sitting on their porches and walking through the streets who were saying that, you know, they were they didn't want to go back into that store. I talked to a young man whose mother shopped in that tops who hasn't left the house since the incident happened. So we really have to make sure that the support is long lasting and that we are have our eye toward the systemic change that has to occur. Um, in East Buffalo and for black people in this community. So the suspect appeared in court yesterday. Some of those who lost loved ones were in the courtroom. Can you talk about um, that scene? Um, I didn't go. <laughs> I've been making myself scarce from a lot of situations because I have a difficult time um, dealing with this emotionally. I'm still very, very angry. And I know that the families are feeling a lot of anger. But to know that he's being brought to court um, with a bulletproof vest on, um, it just—I'm curious as to who is being most protected in this situation and, you know— why it seems like the accused is being protected more than these families. I wanted to go to President Biden, who visited your city of Buffalo on Tuesday, um, three days after the massacre. Um, this is what Biden said. He denounced the attack as an act of domestic terrorism, describing white supremacy as a poison. Look, we've seen the mass shootings in Charleston, South Carolina, El Paso, Texas, and Pittsburgh, last year in Atlanta, this week in Dallas, Texas, and now in Buffalo, in Buffalo, New York. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison <laughs> running through our, It really What's is. That? Your response, India what you heard, what you want to hear, and also the response to the House of Representatives approving a bill aimed at combating domestic terrorism passed by a vote of 222 to 203. Only one Republican Congress member supported the bill, joining the Democrats. Yep. Um, our Republican con Congress member did not, uh, by the way. And white supremacy is a poison. It is also in the foundation and DNA of this country. Um, you know, the lone wolf narrative is untrue. This type of behavior is being bred. It's being encouraged. 
and the stories of the people who are most impacted are being overshadowed by people who are using this as a moment of political, um, for political gain for themselves. And it's disheartening. I'm trying to be very careful with the words that I use this morning. Um, I don't want to hear anything. I want to see action. I want to see legislation. I want to see investments made in communities so that every person is allowed to be self-determined. I want to see employers like TOPS pay their employees a living wage so people are not in disparate poverty. I want to see Black communities actually protected and valued. I want to see banks lend mortgages to families of color and give business financing so that we don't have to depend on a single corporation for all of our needs in our community. I want to see solutions. I want to see something change, right? Um, at the press conference yesterday, the CEO of Top said that there are no plans to uh, put more stores on the east side of Buffalo. The mayor said that his solution in his budget was more money for police and this failed shot spotter technology, where we're seeing that in the moment, people are saying white supremacy is a poison, but then they go back and they do the same things that uphold this white supremacy system. I, I want to take each of what you just said. You tweeted this week uh, about what you're just talking about. Um, you went to a hearing on the Buffalo budget that was focused on adding $900,000 to the police budget for the purchase of Shot Spotter, an artificial intelligence tool that finds sounds that resemble gunshots and alerts police officers. Um, you wrote your biggest concern is that it doesn't work. Explain. Multiple studies show that it doesn't work. It picks up sounds like helicopters, hammers, backfires from cars, fireworks, and identifies it as gunshots. Um, the most effective way to identify when a shooting happens is a person calling 911 dispatch. ShotSpotter has been proven time and time again to be not only the impetus of um, unnecessary police presence in certain neighborhoods. But in Rochester, the Rochester Police Department was able to get ShotSpotter to change the classification of a sound that it heard in, a, in an attempt to frame a black man that they shot down for attempted murder on a police officer. It was proven he was exonerated. Um, but incidences like this is what we should be paying attention to when we make these types of decisions. And these technologies are not what decreases gun violence in communities. What decreases gun violence, particularly in places like East Buffalo, is going to be good living wage jobs, affordable housing, a quality education, and access to the basic needs that this community has lacked for so long. Um, India, can you talk about this 911 call that has become famous now? Um, uh, you have a TOPS worker who's whispering into the phone, trying to describe what's happening, and the dispatcher yells at the worker uh, because they're whispering and hangs up on them? This is in this, the midst uh, of the massacre. This, again, is— um just a symptom of a disease that we have in, especially in Western New York, about the way our public servants treat people who are asking for help and Ooh. assistance. Let me go. Um, just, let me go to the clip. Um, this was played on Buffalo TV station WGRZ. Um, the worker, um, Letitia Rogers, an assistant office manager at Top Supermarket, describes um, what happened. I didn't really see much at all. I just heard the gunshots and just dropped down to the ground and just waited for him to stop, and he just wouldn't stop. So I tried to call 911 and I was whispering because I could hear him close by. And when I whispered on the phone to 911, the, the dispatcher would start yelling at me saying, why are you whispering? You don't have to whisper. And I'm trying to tell her, like, ma'am, he's in the store. He's shooting as an active shooter. I, I'm scared for my life. And she said something crazy to me. And then she hung up in my face. And I had to call my boyfriend and tell him to call 911. 
That's Letitia Rogers, India. That 911 dispatcher is a civilian employee that is paid for with tax dollars. Um, there's no excuse for that type of treatment and that type of behavior. And um, I hope that a lot of these stories that are coming out about corrections officers, police officers, public servants making light of this situation, I hope that they are all held fully accountable. Finally, India, can you end by talking a little more about one of the victims who you knew, uh, the one we talked about, well, where you were first stunned by on Monday, Catherine Cat Massey. Her funeral will be held Monday. Yeah. Um, Miss Cat is going to be sorely missed, I know, by myself, but also her family and this community. She was the co-founder of an organization called We Are Women Warriors. She was a mentor and supporter of me in the work that I did in the Fruit Belt, where she um, lived, where her family has been for many, many decades. Um, she was always uh, an advocate and a fighter for what is just and what is right. And um, I want to make sure that her legacy lives on, and, and I want to do all of the things I know I can do to continue to make her proud of me. I want to thank you so much. And again, our condolences to you, India, to the whole Buffalo community. Um, India Walton, former Buffalo mayoral candidate, longtime community activist. Did you intimate, India, this week that you're going to run again for office? I think uh, she just froze, so we'll have to get to that the next time um, we interview India, now a senior advisor for special projects for the Working Families Party and senior strategic organizer with Roots Action. Next up, we look at the fight for reproductive rights as Oklahoma lawmakers approve the most sweeping abortion ban in the country. We'll speak with the nation's abortion access reporter, Amy Littlefield. Stay with us.